This is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, March 23rd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Picture this. You sign in for what promises to be a busy day at work, only to find out the password for your company login is about to expire and you need to make a new one. Annoying? Maybe. Time-consuming? Depends on how many places you need to log back into. Cybersecurity risk? Well, researchers say it could be. And HR and corporate IT departments aren't the only ones that use poor and ineffective password practices. Here to discuss these techniques and why they pose potential security risks is our tech columnist, Christopher Mims. Hi, Christopher. Thanks for joining us. Zoe, always a pleasure to be here. All right. I'm sure many listeners have experienced the requirement that they update their password or create passwords using what can feel like arbitrary rules, such as, you know, using capital letters or special characters. Why do researchers say these could be security risks? It turns out that if you study how people actually use these systems and behave when they are given these somewhat arbitrary rules, We are smart but lazy, and we tend to create the simplest possible password that satisfies the requirements that we've been given. So, for example, if people are being forced to create a new password every month or every three months, the thing that people tend to do is come up with one password and then just put, you know, a number on the end and then just increase that number by one every time if they're allowed to. Or if they're forced to put in a special character, we've all done this, they'll just put an exclamation point on the end of the password. And that doesn't actually make the password secure. Are there other places that we see this apart from company logins? Are there other companies that force users to do this? A shocking number of companies have these funny rules. And these are consumer internet services. There's actually this website called dumbpasswordrules.com if you want to look it up. And also a lot of companies do a surprising thing where if you put in a very guessable or insecure password, like if you want to make your password 123456, you can do that. And security researchers say that we shouldn't be allowed to put in really guessable passwords or passwords that are frequently used. This is one of the few arbitrary rules that that should be enforced. Something I've been curious about, we're seeing the use of AI everywhere. Are we also seeing it when it comes to hackers trying to get our passcodes for things? One of the amazing things about hackers guessing passwords these days is that they are now able to use these giant lists of leaked passwords that are all available on the internet, you know, from past hacks, there's millions and millions of these passwords, to train AIs to try to guess what a person's password might be. And because every single one of us has had passwords leaked in these breaches, hackers can then use that record of passwords that are associated with our name or our email address to try to guess, oh, you know, this person tends to use their pet's name and then add some special characters on the end. Well, let's try some variants on that. And it shrinks the number of passwords that they have to guess. So if these rules aren't helping to keep sites safe, why do IT departments keep using them? I think in some ways, companies have become so frustrated with the insecurity of passwords that they are moving to what's called security in depth, where they're like, well, probably hackers might break in. So let's have so-called zero trust security inside of our system, where we assume that any account could be compromised. Or let's lean harder on two-factor authentication. This is great. The problem with all of these means is that eventually these other types of security can be bypassed. And what researchers have told me over and over again is, Yeah, we might be moving toward a passwordless future, but on our most secure accounts, we will always have multiple secrets that identify us as who we say we are. And so passwords could be with us for the long run because all of these other means of identifying ourselves, whether they're biometrics or two-factor authentication, eventually they're going to become less secure than they are now as hackers figure out how to break them. 
Can you tell me a little bit more about that? You mentioned two-factor authentication. You mentioned passwordless ways to enter our systems. Why aren't more companies adopting those? Or are they and we're just not noticing? Yeah, one of the challenges with these extra layers of security, like passwordless and so-called two-factor authentication, which you may have experienced if your bank sends you a code that you got to enter when you're trying to log in, Number one, they're less convenient. So people tend to not want to do this to log into every single one of their accounts. So it's always a minority. It's always 20 or 30% of people who might have these on any given account. And the other challenge with these is that, you know, it can be tricky to make it work, especially with this newer standard of passwordless authentication. You know, it only works on some devices. It only works on some web browsers. And frankly, the world runs on old systems, old code, government runs on that, our infrastructure does. So all of those older systems, you know, they're going to be protected by passwords for the foreseeable future. So it sounds like what you're saying is passwords aren't going away and researchers say the more we change them, the less secure they may be. So what do they want people to do? So there are a number of good basic security practices that IT departments could shift to. You know, a simple one is encouraging people to use longer passwords. And one way to get people to do that successfully is don't make them include a bunch of random special characters. Don't make them change that password very often. Because if you can encourage somebody to create a long password the first time and just stick with it, that may be the most secure option. Also, of course, people should be using things like online password lockers, password managers, they're called. But, you know, judging by my inbox, there's a lot of readers who are still not comfortable with that. All right. That's Wall Street Journal tech columnist Christopher Mims. Thanks for joining us, Christopher. Thanks so much for having me. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. But a quick reminder before we go, we still want to hear your questions about generative artificial intelligence. AI programs like ChatGPT, Microsoft's new Bing, or Google's new Bard. And we're going to answer them on an upcoming episode. Send us a voice recording to tnb at wsj.com, or leave us a voicemail with your AI question at 415-439-6482. We look forward to hearing from you. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.